Hello guys and gals. It's a beautiful day here in Kentucky. The wind is gusting from time to time, so hope you can tolerate a little wind noise on the mic today. As you can see, we've got the 39A, the Marlin 39A back out today. I kind of did the, the videos that I would normally do on a rifle in reverse. I put the group video up first, and that's because the owner of this rifle, who's a friend of mine, had a scope mounted on the rifle, so I thought I would go ahead and do the groups while I had the scope on, and then I talked him into allowing me to remove the scope for this video so that I can show off the lines and the handling of this little rifle. Nothing wrong with putting a scope on a lever action, but it does take away from the handling and the overall feel uh, when shooting one of these. So I wanted to get that across, so I did remove the scope for this. Got some rounds in the uh, tube, so shoot a few more times. You take your time like that with a rifle like this and you hardly ever miss. Uh, this one was manufactured in 1959 according to the serial number. If you guys, if any of you watching have never shot a vintage Marlin 39A, you really don't know what a lever action rimfire is all about. And I'm just being honest, I mean this thing it sets the standard as to what a rimfire lever action should be. Shoot these just a little bit quicker this time. Should be empty now. This one, uh, being in made in 59 it does have the micro groove rifling which came around you know showed up in these rifles five or six years prior it is chambered as they all are in 22 short long and long rifle holds 19 long rifle in the tubular magazine i don't have any shorts with me today so i don't know for sure how much you can up that capacity with shorts but I'm sure it's quite a bit. The sights on this rifle, it's a bead up front dovetailed into a ramp. And the rear sight uh, is just the flat across the top with the notch and is a leaf spring style sight with the ladder or step ladder underneath that you can move back and forth to change your elevation and of course you can drift it left or right for your windage just a real basic set of sights but as you can see they get the job done they really they suit the rifle uh, some people put the the uh, peep sights or aperture sights on these rifles and, and those look really great as well and don't take away from the handling the way a optic does Now speaking of this tubular magazine, and any time I load a tube magazine, I've got the action open. Speaking of the tubular magazine, the original design had a loading gate on the receiver, or a loading port, and that didn't work out too well with the small 22 long rifle round. So it was later changed that was the, uh, the original design was the 1891. They made this change fairly early on. And this rifle's had a, a number of changes over the years, but none of them significantly, uh, significantly changed the design of the rifle. It's basically the same rifle as it was back then with just a few changes. 
well, more than a few changes, but what I'm trying to say is none of the changes were detrimental to the design. Kind of like if you took a 1980s Glock 17 and compared it to a brand new off the shelf Gen 4 Glock 17. Yeah, there's been there's been quite a few changes over the years, but it's basically still the same handgun. And that's what we're talking about here with this rifle, only of course over a much longer time frame. This rifle's been around for a very, very long time. So let me see here. Let's go right to left this time. <laughs> Went out of order on those last two there. That's all right. Back back across. I missed that one, so I'm gonna pick him up. Pow! That should be empty. 19 rounds. Pretty handy rifle. Easy to shoot. It does have the 24 inch barrel. Gives it a, uh, does give some heft to it. It is an adult sized rifle. Uh, but that heft up front really makes it easy to steady up on the target. So it is beneficial weight. It's not just weight that makes a rifle heavy with, uh, with no benefits. Beautiful walnut stocks. I'll tell you what, let me get the other camera over here. Uh, I think it'll show the details of this rifle a little better. So let's get it out. I'll tell you what, before we do that, I've got some CCI Quiet here. Let's shoot a few of those onto the steel. You can really hear the steel ring. With these quiet rounds, since there's no, uh, hardly any report. Let's see. <laughs> Got one more. A lot of fun. Okay, so I was hoping this wind would calm down a little bit, but I don't think it's going to do it. So we're going to have to push on anyway. Again, I apologize for any wind noise. I know how distracting that can be. Uh, it's, I find it very hard to watch a video where there's a lot of wind noise in it. So I'm really particular about getting that out of my videos. But this is the only day I have, so we've got to push on. I've got the rifle here on the table. I'll get you guys some close-ups of it. I uh, did want to mention it does have the drilled and tapped receiver. I mentioned the owner had a scope on it. They started doing that in the mid-50s sometime. Started coming from the factory with the drilled and tapped receiver. Beautiful walnut stocks. You know, the fit and finish are just superb. The dark bluing of the rifle combined with that Walnut stock just gives the rifle a classic American look and feel to it. I do want to talk about this trigger. The trigger of this rifle is one of the things that, along with the balance, make the rifle so easy to shoot. The trigger breaks at three pounds and 14 ounces on my Lyman scale, which, you know, that doesn't sound terribly light, but it's a very good trigger. There's hardly any, if, if any, take up. Uh, breaks clean as glass. It does have some over travel, but you know to be honest a little over travel on a trigger has never caused me to miss a squirrel. Might be a good excuse to use someday, but uh, to be honest it doesn't really affect useful accuracy. 
it's just a well balanced well thought out rifle and you can see the little bullseye trademark here on the stock you know that's a trademark i always heard that marlin put that on their walnut stocks so that when these rifles were sitting on a shelf in a store a customer could could look across the counter and identify that this was a marlin rifle and they knew that they were going to be getting a quality rifle don't know if that's exactly true or not uh, some folks say that that's just a marker that they put on all their walnut stocks just to identify the stock but one way or the other it is not a mark to put your sling swivel stud i've seen so many of these rifles with a, a sling stud drilled right into that bullseye and that's not what that's for uh, the sling stud should sit below just like this one is it should be below that trademark bullseye mark now i hadn't mentioned it yet but some of you guys most of you guys that that are probably searching and doing research on marlin 39a and this video has came up in your uh, search you already know that it's a takedown rifle some of you other guys that maybe are new to this rifle are probably wondering what that big thumb screw is on the side well that is for ease of takedown for uh, whether it be for storage or for cleaning uh, mainly for cleaning i would imagine just loosen that thumb screw up and the rifle just just comes right apart now you can see this one is dirty i've been shooting it uh well for over a week i've been shooting this thing nearly every day and i haven't cleaned it yet i'm gonna gonna clean it out and you know clean it up a little bit before i do give it back to the owner i don't want to give him back a dirty gun it goes back together just as easy as it came apart you just kind of have to slip there's a little uh, leaf here push that in and then pull the gun together from the side and just tighten your thumb screw back up it really is that simple now the rifle does have a half cock position uh, most people prefer that over the newer marlins uh, the newer 39s that have the cross bolt safety it just seems so out of place on a rifle like this but most people prefer just to have the half cock i think the newer rifles you know have both you have the half cock and the cross bolt safety so a little bit of overkill on the safeties probably but these older ones i'll tell you what these older ones they fetch top dollar on the market if they're in good shape like this and probably a little bit more expensive than most people who are just out looking for a good 22 to plink with it's probably going to be a little more money than you want to spend to me these are just the ultimate family heirloom you could buy one of these and, and it's an investment you know it's american walnut and steel it's just uh it's something you can be really proud of to uh, hand down to your grandkids or kids one day whenever that time was to come you have to realize that you're buying you're paying for quality and craftsmanship that that really doesn't exist anymore these days so that's really all i got there's a ton of information on these rifles out there if i've misquoted anything today here comes that wind again if i've misquoted anything today i do apologize feel free to correct me down in the comments um, always open to corrections guys don't don't think you know i've got thick skin don't think you're going to hurt my feelings by by correcting me on stuff i appreciate it when you do that so with that being said i'm going to leave you today that's all i got i'll talk to you again soon